charge. Let's go ahead. Get in there, Captain. Where you guys bound for? The Schuylkill. Oh, okay, Roger that. I'm bound up for Packer, so you won't be in my way. Have a good one, thanks. Very good. Have a good trip up. Welcome, I'm Tim and this is Tim B at Sea. Today we're going up the Delaware and turning into the Schuylkill, one of the tributaries to the Schuylkill River, uh, one of the tributaries to the Delaware River. Just coming by the airport here, you won't be able to see it's out of frame right now, but the airport is right over here, Philadelphia Airport that would be. We have the Army Corps dock up on the left hand side here. Coming through uh, over here is what we call Mantua Creek. That's an uh, anchorage that we use. The Army Corps dock is where uh, the people who dredge, you know, the Army Corps of Engineers is in charge of all the dredging. And uh, that's that big ship that's over there is actually something that tows basically like big vacuum cleaners that suck up the dredge spoils and put them, on, put them in their hull and then they go and they pump it off in a slurry off to what they call Mud Island <laughs> or you know an island that they, they just pump the water out on there and the water seeps in the ground or evaporates and leaves the sand and the mud and all that sort of stuff and we've got another boat coming down here seeing him on one whistle gonna meet a ship up here right as I'm going in the river so that ought to be interesting but I think I'll get in there just before him so we should be fine we've got a 14.7 knots coming out of the west right now so it's blowing us this way and we've got an ebb tide so we're fighting the tide this barge may look like all the other barges you see me with but actually this is a real big one I think it just looks the same but uh this is a 60 I think we still call it a 50,000 barrel barge but I think it holds 60,000 barrels a little bit about two and a half million gallons of product as opposed to this this tug and barge is, we're passing right here he has a 30,000 barrel barge so this has, this has almost twice the volume of that one it was kind of interesting the other watch got underway and we were headed from Philadelphia to Baltimore and right before we went in the C&D Canal the Chesapeake Delaware Bay Canal uh, Dispatch called and said, oh, turn around, go back. <laughs> so, as I've said in other videos, I think the key to all this is that you have to be uh, flexible. Anyway, uh, if you look over there, you can see a black and a black ship, uh, container ship there. I should say Yang Ming on the side of it. And uh, that's the one that I'm trying to... Uh, Right now, if, if you can see on the pl plotter, this is us and this is him. In six minutes, he'll be there. Oops. And I'll be right here. So I'm going to hug right in here and I'll see him on two whistles. He and I have talked on the radio already. Oh, my Comico. See you straight, Arch. See you straight. Go ahead and saw Comico. Hey, where you guys bound for? I'll wait for some of the sofa. I'm coming onto the anchorage and just uh, going to go slow and let this uh, ship behind me pass. Okay, can you go deep in for me? I'm going to go deep in the anchorage, Jerry Cat. That's what I'm doing. Okay, 
Roger. See you on two. Thanks for Just to make okay, sure. No why am evolution from the Susquehanna? Good afternoon, Susquehanna. Good afternoon, Cap. I'd like to see you on two. I'm headed in the in the Schuylkill. We'll see you on the two. Thanks for the call. Very good. All right. So now we've got that all ironed out. Shouldn't be any surprises. Now up here on the on the left here, you can see a little dock that spudded down there. It's a barge with spuds, and the spuds are those things that stick down in the mud so that when the tide raises and falls, the barge goes around the spuds that are stuck in there and it stays there. But that's where that big ship that does the dredging goes. It goes up to that barge and it connects this huge hose, I don't know, probably 36 inch diameter hose, and pumps all the dredge spoils over here. And uh, keeps it shipping going. But anyway, straight ahead is the Brooklyn, Na I mean, excuse me, the Brooklyn, listen to me, the Philadelphia Navy Yard. And uh, that will be uh, right where we're turning into the mouth of the Schuylkill River. been a fun two weeks over here on this boat with this crew but tonight I uh, disembark the boat and head for my boat in New York and I'll be there for another three weeks back going back home with my family and crew <laughs> everyone says when are you coming home I say I am home <laughs> I don't know if the camera can pick it up or not, but there's a green buoy up ahead that we'll keep on our port side. And straight ahead of us, it's probably going to be hard to see because the mast is in the way right now, but there's a little lighthouse that we call the Bug Light. You'll see it when we come by. It'll come by our starboard side there. And what, what the idea is, when I, and when I'm, because the tide is flowing at me right now, the, it's an ebb tide, I want to get as close to that Bug Light as I can because if anything were to happen it would buy me more time because the tide would be pulling me back to the left so if I hug the left and something happened I'd run out of room quickly so I gotta favor that side just a little bit and then uh, and then once we get inside the tide from the river won't matter as much once we get by that bug light Things are working out well. Looking at the ship over here, where we are here. I can zoom in a little bit so you can see. It looks like I'm headed out of the channel, and I am going to bump out of the channel into here, but we're still going to have 37 feet of water all up into here and 14 feet to that darker blue line. But hopefully that won't matter. <laughs> hopefully we won't get in there. But let me just pull this down a little bit so you can see where we're going. We're going to be going in here like this, turning around, going underneath the I-85 bridge, and going alongside a barge up here. Security call, Tug Susquehanna's entering the Schuylkill River. We bound up for City Dock. Tug Susquehanna checking on any concerned or opposing traffic. Now, I don't know this, but I suspect there's going to be a lot of other barges at the dock. And they've told me that I need to go as alongside one particular barge, I think is in the middle position. So we'll take, a, we'll take a look at it. But the reason why I tell you this is these are some of the things that we think about as we're going in. Am I going to go port side two or turn the barge around and go starboard side two? And uh, usually that's a plan that I like to have long before I get there. But because I don't know what I'm looking at when I get up there, uh, I think I'm going to make that decision when we turn around the corner and look at where we're going. Because if, if, if they're barges that are stacked up tight and I'm in push gear, I won't be able to get in by that other one, so I'll have to spin around so the tug sticks out in an open area. So we'll, 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 we'll see how it looks.
right, that bug light is coming into view now. You say it's just a little. Looks, you can see the day shape on the top, and it's got a little flashing light on there. And there's a huge shoal when it's when they're, you know, really low tides. You can see rocks going from there right to the shore. I remember years ago, I, I was coming through here, and there was a poor, there was a beautiful schooner, and I guess he figured he had it, and he went right in between the two and. It's hard to ground there, right loaded up with passengers. I mean, I don't think anyone was hurt or anything, but it's one of those things where they just have to wait for the wait for the tide to come back to float them off. And oh god, this has been a real, real tough day for that poor guy. But anyway, as I'm starting to turn in here, because the river goes off this way here, I'm going to be losing less and less of the tide pulling me down. Now, oddly enough, the wind looks like it's blowing right about. 12, uh, right about 11.30 and uh, or actually that's the apparent wind the t true wind is more about at 11 o'clock which is weird I thought it was going to be blowing more about 9 o'clock so that will influence our decision on which side we go to when we get up there as well So this whole area here on the left, Mud Island, um, it's a, <laughs> it's kind of cool. I, I I don't know the history. Like I say, one of the good things about having this channel is that so many people watch it. I'm going to slow down now. We're hauling, we we're pushing against the tide, but since I'm not pushing against all that tide from the Delaware anymore, I'm doing 8.8 .8 knots. <laughs> I'm going to slow down here. I'll never get this thing stopped. But anyway. Uh, I don't know the history of Mud Island, but I've walked around there before, and uh, we were on a contract years ago. And we'd have, you know, when we get done, we knew that we'd have four or five hours off. So some of us would go and get some exercise and walk yeah, around there. Yeah. And it's it's a beautiful, almost like a wildlife refuge. I mean, we saw fox and deer and tons of birds. I mean, unbelievable amounts of geese and ducks and all kinds of stuff in there. And hey, I. Annabelle. I really think that, I mean, I might be wrong about this. This is where, if you guys know different, let me know. But I think that whole island has just gotten that way over years of dredging of them just filling up what might have may have been a marsh at one time and uh, just getting it uh, more and more full with the sand and everything else and mud from the river, keeping the shipping lanes open. So once again, this is uh, the Philadelphia Navy Yard on the right-hand side. Philly launch is up there on the just up there a little further our company keeps a few barges over there sometimes I get in the comments some people ask me where do tugs get fuel and I tell them where they get fuel in in, uh, in New York but uh, one of the things our company does is it has a barge filled with someone's oil when I say someone, or like one of the oil companies, oil, uh, oil, fuel oil, and uh, other tugs, not just our tugs, other tugs from other companies will come over and, uh, you know, they schedule it through our tankermen, and our tankermen will go and pump them off 50 or 100,000 gallons, whatever the tug needs. But that's how that works. So you don't just pull up to a gas station or a fuel dock because most of the docks and gas stations and don't have an, have the kind of capacity that the tugboats are using. So we'll just uh, pump it right off of one of the barges. So now I've got it down to 5.8 knots, 5.9 knots. I was slowed down to 5 and that was a little too slow so I picked it back up. But I need to come around the corner. And I don't imagine any of you are ever coming in here, and if you are, you're probably coming in on a pleasure boat, so it's probably fine. But this day marker here on the left-hand side, and if you look on the plotter here, it's right here. I would caution anybody who draws more than a few feet of water. That whole thing is just about out of water. Now, it says on here on the chart that you've got like 2.6, 3 feet all the way around there. But man, when the tide goes out, you can see mud right over there. And uh, I've been with people before, and they say, "Am I too close to that? Am I too close to that marker?" I said, "Don't worry, you'll never hit it because you'll go aground long before you'll hit it." <laughs> so anyway, just something to know.
How about you, Adam? Call the deck in, have him get ready. Hey, Adam. Yeah, maybe he's in route already. Hey, Tim, I'm heading outside now. All right, very good. There he is. Now, the wind right now says it's coming right, like I say, about 11 o'clock. But I have a feeling that when I turn the corner, it's just following the river right now is what I believe is happening. And, of course, the bridge is going to mess things up, too. My, I have a feeling that when we get here, the bridge, the wind is going to be coming right at us, right down the river, which is good because it doesn't either push us on the dock or push us off the dock. Pushing you off the dock is one of the harder things to do, especially when you get a big barge that's light like this. It's a lot of sail area. Coming up to Gerard Point up here. Massive refinery up here. I, I don't know. I, I may have read something. Or not read, but I may have heard that they might not be doing much stuff over there these days. They had a big accident. I heard they had a big fire over there years ago. I, I don't know. Like I guess I've been in New York, so I don't know kind of lost track of what time happens over here, but anyway, uh... You said we're going outside the 510, right? Yeah, that's correct, and uh, I'm looking right now, and I'm trying to figure out whether we should go... I'd like to drive it right in there, but that's going to mess everybody up for crew change, you know, it'd be better if we did stern in there, but look, you get up there and figure it out, and you're going to have to put the Yokohamas down. Alright, just let me know what you want to do. All right, I believe it's the one in the middle. Yeah, it's not the one on the end. Right. Yeah, this is uh, the 510. I see it's attached one. I'll be waiting for you out on deck. All right. And are you bowed down right now? Yes, sir. We're bowed down towards the office. All right, then what I'll do is I'll try to spin it around and uh, come starboard side to you so that uh, we're both bowed down together so make a uh, crew change better for everyone else. Well, if you come in just like this, we'll be, we'll be bowed about. Oh, so you're bow upriver. Yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah, we're, we're bow upriver. I was thinking towards the office. Yeah, we're bow upriver. Oh, that makes it nice and easy. All right, very good. All right, so, uh, Adam, we're going to need the, we're going to need the Yokohamas down on the port side. Yeah, show up the anchorage. All right, so the guy on the part. Yeah, I'm going to turn the thing on. Uh, we got to unhook the chains off of the uh, Yokohama. They got this down here. You're going to unhook the chain up there and I turn it on. Copy that. All right, so the guy on the barge, one of the tankermen on the barge, heard us coming and he uh, told us, I thought he was bow down river, but I guess he's now. He, he, he's bow up river, which means I want to put the two of them to, together so that that way they'll they'll fit better that way and uh, so that's gonna work out great for us now I just kinda bleed off the speed wait for them to get the hydraulics on and uh, they'll start lowering our Yokohamas and now the winds blowing at about one or two o'clock so I should be able to knock 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 on wood <laughs> be able to drive it up there and let the wind just push us over nice and easy but uh better plans have gone awry before so who knows what's going to happen now, I'm doing 4.6 so I'm going to just take them both out of gear and just let it uh, cool off a little bit now, as soon as I take it out of gear you can see the bow is starting to fall over so I give it some right wheel to try to square up so I'd rather be flat in other words parallel with the two barges even if I'm crabbing that way and you see let me give it a little bit more wheel we're doing 3.8 knots. There we go. That that 
held it up. Now the bow is staying straight. So there's 3.6 knots of water going by the rudder and that's pushing the bow to the right but the wind is blowing the bow from the right to the left so I've got it balanced right now and the way I do that is I don't know if you can see it with this camera or not but I look at the mast of the barge and I look at one of the piling or one of the supports there of the bridge that's up ahead of us and I line them up and if they move one way or the other I can see and we call that ranging and so I it can it'll it'll let me know what kind of, of lateral movement I have All right, down to two and a half knots. We'll just come ahead on one engine. Now I got to be real careful here because uh, it gets, the water gets real skinny over here. Uh, you can't see it now, but we're already showing mud over on the bank over there. And the chart plotter says this is like one foot over here, so I have to be I have to be relatively careful. I want to keep going, but I don't want the speed that I'm going to go by everything. So just keep it moving nice and easy. Looks like one engine's maintaining at 2.5 knots. That's a good speed for us. Help us steer a little bit, keep us from falling into that bank. Yeah, I'm looking at this refinery over here. This thing, uh, like I say, this thing was massive. And you go up around the river all the way up there, it just goes and goes. It's like, it's a massive refinery. I don't know if it's all the same one or not, but it is massive. But I'm looking at it now, and it looks like they're tearing a building down over there, and I see nothing going on. There's no signs of life at all. I would probably know more about this if I was still working in this area, but like I was saying, I was, I'm just covering... I'm just uh, helping out. They needed someone. Okay, now I'm falling down pretty good. The wind's picked up to 14, 15 knots. So I'm going to pick up my speed a little bit to try to keep me from falling down. I don't want to land too. Sh I don't want to land on the barges before I get to the barge I want to get to. All right, that's helping us. That's a, a sense that you need. You can't just look out the window. You got to feel yourself sliding from one way or the other. And, uh, that's something that everyone will teach you, they'll tell you when you're training, but I think it's something that really has to be, I don't think we're born with that sense. I think that's something that you have to, you just have to do a while, you know, and then all of a sudden you can feel it. Alright Tim, the uh, valve's just passing the stern of the Alright, fine, Scott, I'm going to blow right over there, so uh, I'm just going to keep it rolling like this until we get them lined up, and then I'll stop and we'll blow right over. Copy that. Now we're going to... 60 feet off. 60 feet off. Very good. You've heard me talk about my Portuguese captain that taught me everything I knew. And he, uh, I used to be so intimidated by him because he'd say, hey, you're, you're setting down on this buoy over here. And I'd be looking at him, I'm looking at the chart. Right, I'm I'm like, I, I did, couldn't feel it. Yeah, and it was just that he had done it so long, he, he had that sense that he was sliding that way. And that's, uh, something. Pretty good headway. Just the house. All right, I'm gonna put on the brakes and get her slowed down a little bit. Copy that. All right, we're back. just coming up on the uh, forward yoke. Okay, now I'm backing more on my uh, starboard right, engine because the bow is gonna want to take a dive anyway. Slowly. You can see the bow is coming off there right now, so I'm gonna actually start twisting and pushing the bow, doing a, a right hand twist because. That, that bow is going to want to come flying off of there. Yes, the wind is blowing it right over. As soon as you take your speed off, it comes right off. You know, you start sliding. Alright, we're uh, 15 off on the bow. Alright. Okay, now we're looking better. Alright, um, got about. 10 feet till you touch up on the bow. Alright, I got the sterns lined up here, so we'll just pull her over here and you throw it a few lines and we'll be good to go. Copy that. You got about 4 feet until you touch up on the bow. About 2 feet. About 2 and a half feet, actually. 1 <laughs> foot. Alright, we're touched up on the bow. 
You got about one foot till you touch up on the stern. Okay. Now I just got to watch that those Yokohamas don't compress and bounce us off. But like I say, the wind will blow us back eventually anyway. But I want to come ahead. I'm about a foot or two shy. There we go. That looks better. And so that's coming into uh, the infamous city dock and the beautiful and pristine Schuylkill River. <laughs> anyway, uh, hope you enjoyed that video. I certainly enjoy having you guys watch and comment. Thank you so much for everything. And uh, be sure to uh, school me on the history of Mud Island if you know anything about it. And as always, be safe out there. And I'll see you on the one.